So now let's actually take a look at the individual steps that help us generate fatty acid molecules. Now as we look at all these different steps, keep in mind that all of them take place in the cytoplasm of our cell. Now let's briefly recall what happened in the previous several lectures. So we said that the building blocks of fatty acid molecules are acetyl coenzyme A molecules and we build these acetyl coenzyme A molecules in the matrix of the mitochondria. So to actually use acetyl coenzyme A to synthesize fatty acid molecules, we have to transport those acetyl coenzyme A molecules from the matrix of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm of that cell. So Let's assume that actually took place. So we have the acetyl coenzyme A molecule and it's found in the cytoplasm of that cell. What happens next? Well, if the conditions are right for fatty acid synthesis, that is, if we have high levels of citrate and high levels of ATP, then that will promote the process of fatty acid synthesis. And what that means is we're going to commit the acetyl coenzyme A molecule to actually undergoing fatty acid synthesis. And this is the step that commits the acetyl coenzyme A to helping form that fatty acid chain. So let's see what the step actually consists of. So firstly, this, the enzyme that catalyzed this step is a carboxylase. More specifically, it's acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. And just like any other carboxylase, this carboxylase requires three different things. Number one is it needs an energy source and that's where ATP comes into play. Number two is it needs a carbon source. Why? Well, because as this name implies, the carboxylase will actually attach a carbon dioxide onto the acetyl coenzyme A molecule, elongating this molecule by one carbon. And that's why we have the bicarbonate. Number three is attached covalently onto the carboxylase is biotin. And biotin is a vitamin B7 molecule. Now, the reaction as shown on the board is actually the sum of two individual reactions. So this is actually the overall net reaction of the sum of two different reactions that are not shown on the board. But I'd like to talk about them for just a moment because they actually demonstrate the importance of biotin. So what happens in step number one in this reaction? So in step number one, we have the hydrolysis of ATP by this carboxylase and the energy that is released in the hydrolysis of ATP helps us attach a carbon dioxide onto the biotin. So in step number one, we form, and that's not shown on the board, but we form a complex that consists of carbon dioxide attached onto biotin, which is also attached onto the carboxylase. Now in the second step, that's, that once again is not shown, that carbon dioxide is transferred from the biotin onto the acetyl coenzyme A molecule and we generate malonyl coenzyme A. So that's the importance of biotin. Biotin allows the binding of that carbon dioxide which ultimately transfers that carbon dioxide onto the acetyl coenzyme A to form this malonyl coenzyme A. Now, this step is very important for three reasons. Number one is it commits the acetyl coenzyme A molecule. Number two is it's the rate limiting step. And number three is this is the enzyme that is regulated to basically either inhibit or activate fatty acid synthesis. Now, we're not gonna focus on the regulation of this enzyme because that's actually pretty complicated. So we'll save that discussion for a later lecture. So remember three things about this step. Number one is it commits the molecule. Number two is it's a regulatory step. Number three is it's a rate limiting step. And we'll come back to this step when we'll look at step number four. Now, once we form the malonyl coenzyme A molecule, let's put it aside for a moment and let's look at step number one. Now, the enzyme that catalyzes steps one through step seven is fatty acid synthase. And remember that fatty acid synthase, or simply FAS, is a single polypeptide chain that actually contains seven different catalytic sites, seven different catalytic domains, as well as an A 
an, an, ACP, um, an ACP domain. And the ACP domain stands for acyl carrier protein. Remember the acyl carrier protein actually contains a phosphopentathione group. And that group contains this sulfhydryl, uh, sulfhydryl group. And that will allow the binding of certain molecules as we'll see in just a moment. So this is, uh, this is our FAC, uh, FAS and we have this ACP that contains the phosphopentathione that is not shown that contains this sulfhydryl group and that will bind this molecule, the acetyl coenzyme A, as we'll see in just a moment. In addition, you also have to be aware of the cysteine residue that is also present in this FAS molecule because it will also play an important role as we'll see in just a moment. So, Step number one is catalyzed by one of the catalytic domains we call acetyl transacylase and that is found on this FAS molecule. And so what this enzyme does or what this catalytic domain does is it catalyzes the attachment of this acetyl coenzyme A molecule onto this sulfhydryl group and we generate this intermediate shown here. In addition, we kick off the coenzyme A as shown here. Now this acetyl coenzyme A is not the same as this acetyl coenzyme A. So like I said, we're basically putting this uh, malonyl coenzyme A away for just a moment because we're going to use it in one of these later steps. Now once we generate this intermediate, the next step is to actually move this uh, acetyl group from this sulfhydryl to this sulfhydryl shown here. And so in step number two, all we're doing is we're transferring this acetyl group onto this cysteine, which act as a temporary holding group. So it holds this molecule in place because ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to combine them and elongate that fatty acid chain. So we see that in the next step, the acetyl group is transferred onto the cysteine residue as shown in this particular diagram. Now, once we form that, what happens next? Well, in the next step, this is where the malonyl coenzyme A comes into play. So the malonyl coenzyme A that we formed in this step now is a reactant in step number three. And in step number three, what happens is we have another catalytic domain that is part of the FAS molecule known as malonyl transacylase catalyze the formation of a bond between this molecule here and this sulfhydryl group of that ACP group found on that FAS. And so we generate this intermediate. And now in this intermediate, we have that acetyl group attached onto the cysteine and we have the malonate group that's attached onto that sulfhydryl of this ACP molecule. Now, one important difference between this catalytic domain and this catalytic domain is this catalytic domain is much more specific for this molecule than this domain is specific for this molecule. In fact, this domain here can actually bind other carbon molecules. In fact, it can bind propanyl coenzyme A and that's how we're able to actually form a chain fatty acid molecules, but in this case, we're only going to focus on the even chain fatty acid molecules. So once again, in step three, the malonyl transacylase domain of the fatty acid synthase catalyzed the transfer of the malonate group from the malonyl coenzyme A that we formed here onto the ACP domain. This enzyme domain is highly specific for the malonyl coenzyme A, unlike this catalytic domain that is not that specific for this acetyl group. And this basically helps prepare the molecule for step four in which we have a condensation step in which we elongate that fatty acid chain. So let's take a look at step four. Now step four is a very important step. Why? Well, because this is the step that actually drives this entire reaction forward. So remember, what we did in this step here is we hydrolyzed the high energy ATP molecule and we used that energy to actually carboxylate this acetyl coenzyme A to form this malonyl coenzyme A. 
Now, what we do here is a decarboxylation step and we break a thioester bond. And this pretty much releases enough energy for, for us to actually drive this reactant forward. So this step is a crucial step in fatty acid synthesis because it drives the overall reaction forward. What happens is the enzyme, acylmalonyl ACP condensing enzyme, basically decarboxylates this group and that prepares these two molecules for nucleophilic attack. So this nucleophilically attacks this and that breaks this thioester bond that releases a good amount of free energy so it lowers the free energy of this product molecule and that helps drive the equilibrium toward the product side. So we ultimately move this acetyl group from the cysteine onto the ACP and we generate this molecule here which we call acetyl, uh, acetoacetyl, uh, acetoacetyl ACP intermediate. So we see that the decarboxylation of the malonate group sets up the reaction for a nucleophilic attack that cleaves the high energy thioester bond, this bond here, and the product of this is acetoacetyl attached onto the ACP molecule. So this is what we call the condensation step. Now notice what else this step actually tells us. It tells us that even though we used this as a carbon source to actually generate the malonyl coenzyme A in this step, here that, co uh, that carbon source, namely the carbon dioxide, is actually removed. And what that implies is all the carbon atoms that are found in that fatty acid chain that is synthesized in this process, they come from acetyl coenzyme A and not from that carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is ultimately removed from that fatty acid chain. It does not contribute to those carbon atoms. So again, very important step because it allows us to drive the equilibrium of this reaction toward the product side. So ultimately, it's the indirect action of ATP that sets up this reaction and allows us to undergo this decarboxylation step that drives this reaction forward. Now, let's move on to step number five. So in step number, uh, number five, this acetyl, uh, acetyl, acetyl group is our reactant molecule. Now this step number five is a reduction step and the reductant molecule that we use is NADPH. So we use NADPH to basically transform this carbonyl group into an alcohol group and we form this molecule as shown here. The enzyme domain on that FAS that catalyze this step is known as beta keto acyl uh, ACP reductase. It's a reductase because it uses this reducing molecule to actually generate this alcohol from this carbonyl group. Now we call it beta keto acyl because this is actually a beta keto molecule. So when the beta keto acyl ACP reductase domain of ACP uses uh, the reducing power of NADPH, we ultimately generate that D3 hydroxybutyryl molecule that we have here. So this is a reducing step. Let's move on to step number six. In step number six, we ultimately want to actually remove this hydroxyl group and we want to transform this alcohol into a double bond. And the enzyme that catalyzes this is 3-hydroxyacyl-ACP dehydratase. And again, this is one of the seven catalytic domains that we find on FAS. So in this step, we basically have the dehydration step in which these two, uh, the, this group and this group are combined to form water. They are removed and we form this double bond. So the 3 hydroxyacyl acp de uh, dehydratase domain of FAS catalyzes the dehydration reaction in which we generate a double bond and release water, thereby forming a molecule that we call crotonyl that is attached onto the ACP. 
So we have a condensation step, we have a reduction step, we have a dehydration step, and in step seven, this is a second reduction step, and again, we use NADPH as our reducing molecule. So this is catalyzed by enoyl ACP reductase. Why? Well, because this molecule here is an enoyl. More specifically, it's a trans-2, trans-delta-2 enoyl intermediate. And so we take this crotonyl molecule and we reduce it to basically remove this double bond and basically form this single bond. And so we see ultimately when we go from step five to step seven, what we do is we, or more specifically when we go from, uh, yeah, we can say from step five to step seven, we transform this beta keto group to a methylene group. That's the point of step, uh, steps five through step seven. Why do we do that? Well, because the fatty acid that we generate at the end only contains single bonds. So we want to form a saturated fatty acid molecule. So in this step, we have the second reduction step. We generate the butyryl group that is shown here attached onto the ACP. And this basically completes the first elongation step. Now, why do I say the first elongation step? Well, because all we did so far is generate a fatty acid chain that contains only four 